Hey y'all, I'm so thankful that you chose to click on this video. I pray that it meets you right where you are and it encourages you. Something I've been sitting in lately is Psalm 8611, where we are told that when we learn God's truth, we learn to rely on his faithfulness. And so I pray that that's what happens today as you watch this video, that you rely on the Lord's faithfulness more and more. And be sure and like and subscribe and check out the merch that's come out. I love y'all. Howdy there, awesome people. My name is Emma Mae Jenkins, and I am so grateful and so overjoyed that you have joined me today on my YouTube channel. And I hope that you know how just incredibly loved you are. I hope that you know how much you matter and how thankful I am that I get to be a part of your life, even if it's through the simplicity of a YouTube video. I just think that that's so stinking cool. But y'all, I'm really excited about today. This has been a message on my heart for quite some time, but it's my first time to just sit down and solely talk about this message alone. And so I'm pretty excited. And it's coming from a passage in John chapter two. And I just wanna give y'all a little bit of context from John chapter two of what's going on right now. So the Passover is happening in Jerusalem. It's the Jewish Passover celebration, and Jesus is going to the temple, and this is where we're picking up, is he notices that the temple, which was known as the house of the Lord, because it was where the Lord dwelt, now the Lord dwells in anyone who has believed in his son Jesus, because when you put your faith in Jesus, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the presence of God. That's why this is a totally other message, but that's why later in the New Testament, we read that we are God's temple. So we are to honor the Lord with our bodies because we know our body is not our own, but it, it is the house of his spirit. So, but here is before Jesus has died on the cross and before he's risen again and before the Holy Spirit has come to dwell among the people. And so the temple is where the presence of the Lord was and um, so this was God's house. So we're picking up in John chapter 2, starting in verse 13. Um, it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a this is really intense. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins all over the coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then, going over to the people who who sold doves, he said to them, "Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace." Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. And this verse is where we're going to hone in today. But this was a prophecy made like way, way, way many years before Jesus was even born. That passion for God's house will consume me. So this prophecy that passion for God's house will consume the, the one who is coming to save them is being fulfilled right now because it's evident that Jesus was filled with passion for the house of God. Um, and so then that's where we're going to stop today, but then it's incredible. So if you want to go continue reading John 2, um, that is definitely something to go do. But this is just the verse that I have been sitting in and have been so encouraged by lately. John 2, 17, passion for God's house will consume me. And so there's a couple of questions that I wanted to challenge y'all with today is what are you passionate about? What consumes you? What fills your mind all the time? What are you constantly focused on? Because we all have things that we're passionate about. Like what are, even when talking about what are you passionate about, what consumes you, could even be like a hobby. Like we could even be talking about what do you love to do? Like what gets you excited? What gets you going? What gets you pumped? Like we all have those things that we're passionate about. Some are like a hobby and others are like a career that we end up getting a degree in because we love so much. But on a deeper level, what are you passionate about? What consumes you? Like what, whatever it is that, that you're answering this question to, of what your passion is, like, like 
it is that passion like consuming you is your passion for for your work consuming you is your passion for serving your community consuming you is your passion for fill in the blank whatever your passion is is that what is consuming you but i think it's so cool i wrote this down in my notes Jesus' passion was for God's house, and it consumed him. And this even could, this isn't really what I wanted to talk about today necessarily, but this even could be in a way that's not helpful and not healthy. And what I mean is some of us, we really wouldn't come to quickly agree, but some of us are passionate about worrying some of us are passionate about fear. Some of us are passionate about what ifs kind of thoughts. Some of us are passionate about comparing ourselves to other people. Some of our, us are passionate about the things that we've done that we're not proud of in our past and it's consuming us. And you may hear that thing like, what are you talking about, Emma? Like all of those things, they weigh me down. But I know from experience for myself, I may hate worrying all the time or I may hate being afraid all the time or I may hate being hard on myself all the time, but if I'm not making a change, if I'm not choosing to let something different occupy my mental capacity, if I'm not choosing to let something different consume me, then it very well comes across as though I'm passionate about it because I keep going in that same direction. And that can be really dangerous to be passionate about those things and it consumes you. It's what we choose to put our focus on. What are you choosing to put your focus on? What if whatever you did, going and going back onto what I originally was going to talk about with y'all today, but talking about passions, just about hobbies and what you want to do with your life and your dreams and your goals, like what if whatever you did, whatever you were passionate about was fueled, look at this, was fueled by the desire to bring God glory? I think that's so cool. What if the, like, the desire to bring God glory is what consumed you? And this spurred you on, this desire to bring glory to the name of God, it spurred you on to steward this passion that you have because God has given all of us enjoyment. He's given all of us these hobbies that we love. That's not just randomly given. Like the things that you love, the things that you get excited about, those, those like hobbies and those like little, like it could be painting, it could be cooking, it could be reading, like, like it could be working on computers, it could be music, it could be medicine and science and like talking about all of the all the different categories even within that and pharmacy and doctors and nurses and pediatricians like there's such a broad just a broad scope of of different hobbies and passions and things that we love and those aren't accidental like god purposefully knit those things within us but how are we stewarding them and are we letting that be that hobby that enjoyment that passion be what consumes us are we letting the desire to bring glory to God be what consumes us? And that is what fuels our passion. So if what, what if like I am consumed with loving God and loving people and wanting to bring glory to his name and wanting to see people come to know him and whatever passion I have, whether it's teaching and making YouTube videos or it's writing books or it's writing a caption on Instagram or it's going out and serving at the local food bank or it's like it literally could be anything. What if that thing that consumed me to bring God glory, that's what fueled the passion that God gave me on purpose? I just think that's so cool. What if this desire to bring God glory that consumed you was what fueled you to steward the passions that you have for the glory of God for his house? And like I said, passions that could be cooking, teaching, music, sports, writing, theater, film, broadcasting, medicine, any of these things and more, a thousand plus more. What would it look like if passion for who God is, 
passion for his house, passion for heaven, passion for the souls of people, passion for his word, passion for, for his name consumed you, how would this impact how you taught, how you cooked, how you broadcasted, how you painted, all of these, all of these different passions that we have, what if our passion for the Lord is what consumed us and it fueled whatever we did with our passions here on earth. I just think I, I would be amazed to see what would happen if desire for God's glory consumed us and we was our, our ultimate deepest passion and that is what ignited joy and excitement and purpose in the passions that we have here on this earth while we're here. To be consumed with passion for the house of God, with who he is and what he is about, it's to live unashamed, no matter where you go or no matter who you're with or no, no matter what occupation you hold. Because if we're, if we're really gonna take this seriously, that whatever passion I have, whatever career I'm currently in, whatever, whatever thing in school I'm currently studying, like whatever I'm doing, that's why scripture says, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. If I am living for the glory of God and that takes hold of every single passion, every occupation, every title, every relationship, every success, like ev everything that I have and I'm a part of, that, that takes boldness. That takes an unashamed type of living. And whenever I was thinking through this, for Jesus to have, for him, for him to live out the reality that passion for God's house consumed him, we'll later go on to read that some of the leaders in that area of Jerusalem were not happy about how he responded to what was going on in his father's house. They were not happy in response to his passion that consumed him for the glory of God. They were not happy with his boldness, with his, with the way that he was expressing his love for God. They were not pleased with it. And whenever you choose to go and live unashamedly, fueled by the passion for God's house, consumed with who he is and what he's about and who he's called you to be, and that's overflowing into every aspect of your life, all the passions that you have, all the relationships that you're in, all of the things you're putting your hands to, there will be people that don't like it. That's just how it is. And whenever I was thinking through that reality, I was thinking about David. And in David, or in 1 Samuel chapter 6, it talks about how David is like just so in awe of how good God is. And he's praising the Lord. And he is so, like, I, I'm not telling you to go do this. But he literally was naked in the streets of the city, dancing and praising God. Like, he, he was happily looking like a fool because he could not contain what consumed him. He was passionate and he was so in love with who God was in that was what, that, that, that was what consumed him. And his wife was embarrassed by it and his wife was trying to tell him, hey, you need to tone it down. You need to stop. You need to X, Y, Z. She just was not happy with it. And this is so cool. David insisted on celebrating the Lord and he said, I will be, un I will be more undignified than this. Why was he able to so boldly say that whenever he was clearly being rejected by how he was living based on what was consuming him? Be because he knew that the Lord and his praise and his, the worship to the Lord it was worth it. It's what consumed him. It, well, it was what he was about. Whenever the Lord is who we are about and the work of his kingdom is what we are about, no amount of rejection, no amount of 
naysayers, no amount of comments, no amount of disapproval from the world can stop us from praising God, the God and, and the glory of him that consumes us. He said, I will be more undignified than this. And I honestly didn't know what undignified meant. And so I went and looked it up. And what it basically means is you're willing to be made light of. You're willing to be, to appear foolish and, unsim, and unseemly. So basically, people can have the opinions of, of you that they wish. But whenever you're, like, whenever you're consumed with passion for the things of God, you refuse to stop celebrating who God is. You refuse to stop celebrating what he has done because you know he is worthy. And because passion for who he is and his house and his business consumes you. So I, I really just want to leave y'all with this. What are you passionate about? Because that's not accidental. The occupation that you're in, it's not accidental. The things you enjoy doing, it's not accidental. The things that bring you energy, that you're good at, that you have skill and talent in, that is given to you by God, the maker of who you are, your very being, the designer of you, gave you those enjoyments, gave you those excitements, gave you those skills and those passions. I want to ask you though, what is your deepest passion? In a real deep level, what passion is the what is the passion that consumes you? Because there will be a time where you won't be able to get up and go do all the things you're doing today. There will be a time where you may not have the occupation that you currently have. There may there may be a time where like like that it's not going to look like what it does currently. But there is something that is steadfast and unchanging in the same today, yesterday, and forever, and that is the Lord. And whenever you are passionate about who he is and that passion is what consumes you and that passion is what overflows into every hobby, every occupation, every passion that you pour your time and energy in, your life will never be the same. Even whenever people hate you for it, even whenever people say bad things about you for it, even whenever people fill in the blank for it, your response will be, I will still celebrate the Lord and I will be more undignified than this because I'm unashamed of the gospel. I'm unashamed of my God's house. I'm unashamed of what he's done for me and how he has changed my life and who he is. And therefore, I it would make no sense if I didn't, if, if every aspect of my life wasn't impacted by who he is and what he's about. What are you passionate about? What consumes you? Is it the house of God? Is it who he is? Because when it's who he is, it changes everything. And going back to the little nugget that I mentioned earlier that I didn't really plan on mentioning, doesn't really go on topic of this, but what are you passionate about? Maybe not in a healthy way. What do you sit and dwell on and dwell on and dwell on and run in the direction toward that? And it's consuming you that isn't productive. It's thought patterns that just lead to dead ends. It's, it's thought patterns that lead to just deep bitterness. It's thought patterns that, that lead just to deep fear and worry and, and all of these assumptions that, that were never meant to be. I encourage you to take that to the Lord. Because those are not the things that God intended to consume you. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is noble and admirable and right and pure and excellent and worthy of praise, think on these things and put into practice the things that I have told you and you may have peace. God intends for his peace to consume you. God intends for his joy to consume you. He even says in Psalm 23, I will overflow your cup. And the things he wants to overflow your cup with are good things. 
because he is a good God. He is your good shepherd in whom you lack no good thing. So even though that was a little off topic, I hope that that was for somebody who needed to hear it, that if you're constantly consumed with fear and worry and comparison and just wherever you are, you know what to fill in that blank with, you are not made to be consumed with those things. That is not what God has for you. Don't let your mind get passionate about the things that aren't of him, that the, thing, the things that aren't from his voice, the things that aren't healthy for, for who you are made to be. I love you. I believe in you and I'm thankful for you. And if y'all have not, be sure and subscribe and comment down below and let me know um, how you are encouraged and what other things that you would like to hear. And if you have any questions about today's message too, that would be so awesome. Um, and if you haven't also, my Instagram is 1 Corinthians 13 underscore love and um, my podcast is the Have You Heard podcast, and you can listen to it on anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Y'all, I hope that you have just the most incredible day. I hope that it is the passion for God's house, passion for who He is that consumes you and overflows into the other things of your life, into every aspect of your life. And um, even whenever it makes you look like a fool because you don't look the way the rest of the world does, I pray that you will yet celebrate the Lord and you will be more undignified than that because it consumes you and you can't help it. Y'all are awesome and I will talk to y'all soon. Peace.